Hi there. Um, as you know, I'm on a roll. This is going to be my second one. I'm not going to do any more because I've got my show in a minute. As you know, I'm a DJ on Lovers Rock Radio and I'm on tonight, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's www.loversrockradio.com. It's best to download the app anyway. I wanted to talk about whistleblowing and um, whether or not it's worth whistleblowing. Because sometimes it's the good apples that get punished. I mean, when you think about whistleblowing, it's mostly from large organisations like the health service, like the police, that kind of stuff. So when you are whistleblowing, you're going up against an institution. And there was this guy called Sir, what's his name? Sir Piccio. Um, yes, yeah, Sir Ippio. Sir Piccio. Yeah, Frank Sir Piccio. He actually get got shot in the face. He was in the police force. He um, whistled blue on some kind of misdemeanors going on in the police force. He got hounded. He got, you know, harassed. Police wouldn't come and help him. He nearly got shot in the face. He nearly bled to death. So, you know, there's a kind of an unwritten rule in the police force, apparently, that you don't whistle blow. The mechanisms are there for reporting misdemeanors. But I'm not sure if you want to use them. And so what I was thinking about, if you're not, you're supposed to be protected when you whistle blow, but you can't be protected. You're supposed to ask for confidentiality and they'll say to you, well, we can only be confidential, um, but it's going to inhibit our investigation. So we can't guarantee confidentiality. So if there's no protection, what is going to encourage people to whistle blow? People are just going to watch misdemeanors happen and they're just going to keep stung because who wants to get their face blown off? Who wants to be harassed? Who wants to be beaten up? Who wants to lose their job? And that's probably, you know, George Floyd, we haven't spoken to him about him for a while, but maybe that's why those police stood around and said and did nothing. People are saying, why did those police stand around and do nothing? Because there's a hidden code, an unspoken code. You don't snitch on your on your on your colleagues. And if you do, you're gonna know about it. So you'd better have you'd have I don't even know, you'd have to be really influential of sorts to be able to rise above all of the bureaucracy and get away with whistleblowing. Apparently, if you whistle blow, you get about 30% of what the government, um, between 30 and 50% of what the government pay out. But you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? I know somebody, they um, whistle blew against the health service. Oh, my God. She was a nervous wreck. She was nearly in a mental hospital by the time they finished with her. So is it worth it? You've got these whistleblowing policies in place, all these mechanisms. Anyway, what do my notes say? Whistleblowers are meant to, pre meant to be protected from retaliation for disclosing information that they believe violate the law, gross mismanagement, waste of funds, abuse of authority, and sub substantial and specific danger to public health or safety. So, and that's another thing. I'm not even sure how whistleblowing and the Hippocratic Oath work because with the, this is for the health service. You have the Hippocratic Oath, and this is just for nurses. It's not for admin staff or non-clinical staff. But you have the Hippocratic Oath for the health service that you swear you don't say a thing if you see anything I want. You have to keep stum. But then... You have the um, you have the whistleblowing policy, which is supposed to protect you. But supposing under the supposing while you're doing some kind of practice, you see something fishy going on. Under the Hippocratic Oath, you can't say nothing. So therefore, the whistleblowing policy is null and void. Not unless the whistleblowing policy is for um, non-clinical practitioners. I'm just throwing it out there, peeps. I don't have the answers. So if you report no action, 
If you report no action taken, are you confident enough to escalate? Okay, so you report you report something. You've seen your boss nicking something, nicking something out the safe. That's a bit, you know, it's a contrived example. But you see your boss nicking something out of the safe, and then you decide, oh, I'm going to report him. So you report him to the bigger boss because you can't report to your boss because he's your boss. So you go to the bigger boss and say, look, you know, I saw um, so-and-so nicking something out of the safe. And he says, okay, I'll deal with it. And he doesn't. You you can es escalate that. But then if you're thinking, okay, if his bigger boss ain't saying nothing, who am I, the little people, to go and say something to escalate it above the bigger bosses? I'm looking to lose my bloody job. Who the hell do I think I am? Little pipsqueak, we can replace you in a bloody minute. I need my job. I need I need my salary. Am I really going to jeopardise that, please? So what is the point of having a whistleblowing policy if it's not effective most of the time? Admittedly, at some cost, it does work. But you'd have to be thorough. You'd have to have some serious people on your side in order to get through that. Some serious lawyers. Anyway, if you do have any complaints against NHS staff, the telephone number is 0345 um, But complaints against police misconduct, IPCC. Now, the I, that's the Independent Police Commissioning... Oh, don't know what the last C stands for. Anyway... The majority of them are ex-cops. <laughs> it's supposed to be independent, but the majority of them are ex-cops or ex-police have been somewhere in the ex-police force, in the police force at some point. So are you really going to complain to them? Are they going to be on your side? Mm. You'd be a bit wary, wouldn't you? But the, the system is there and it's meant to protect you and it's meant to do something about it. That when you complain in the police force, they have they they call it the blue wall of silence. Can you imagine being at work and nobody not talk to you? Now you could say, "Listen, I just go in there to do my work. I just go in there to do my job. I just go in there to pick up my pay packet." But it ain't that easy because you have to work with other people. You work with other people and they're making these nasty little snides and they're making your life hell. You're not going to want to do that. I'm not discouraging anybody from whistleblowing, but I'm just saying it's not as easy and as straightforward as it looks. You really have to be a strong individual and you really have to have sufficient evidence unequivocal evidence and you have to have backup by some kind of superior in order to go through this and see it through that's what i would think that's my opinion so anyway a detective joe crystal another in another one in america betrayed the brotherhood and he was driven out of the police force in 2015 i mean they put him under so much pressure and that's the thing, you know, they say, oh, there's not enough black people in the police force. This is what they say, you know, there's not enough black people in the police force. But even if you go into the police force, you see something wrong. They think if there's more black people in the police force, it's going to stop all this racial profiling and it's going to make things better. But it's not. Because if there is this wall of silence, whether you're black or white, you're going to get it. Worse if you're black, probably. So what is the point if you going if you go in there as a black police officer and you can't make a change? What is the point in going into the police force? There is no point, and that's probably why because the few that do go in there, some of them have experienced so much racism they just come out quick, and that's what the police want. They don't want bloody niggers in there on their police force because they don't want anybody seeing what they're doing. So they will drive them out one way or the other. And they'll make their lives pretty difficult. And you're going to have to be a Guinness head in order to stick it through. By a Guinness head, I mean, you know, black on the white, on black, 
the, um, at the bottom and white on top. Anyway, the police professor, the, poli <laughs> the police profession are under no obligation to protect whistleblowers. <coughs> Can you imagine? They're under no obligation to protect whistleblowers, except that, in, in quotes, failure to do so could mean that the worker is able to bring an employment tribunal claim for the detriment and or dismissal. That's the only way that you're going to be protected as a whistleblower in the police force. As far as they're concerned in the police force, you're stabbing your colleague in the back if you snitch. So, I mean... I think with Joe Crystal, he, he knew that there was a lot of um, bribes going on. People, you know, the police were taking bribes from um, from paedophiles and drug uh, gangs and goodness knows what else. So he reported it. Ooh, did he face the blue wall of silence? Nearly cost his, it nearly cost his life. So anyway... Um, Police whistleblowers are at risk. Whistleblowing report usually... Okay. What you'd normally whistleblow about is deaths and serious injuries, discrimination, welfare and treatment of vulnerable people, and corruption and abuse of power. Use of force, armed policing, police chases or traffic incidents custody or during detention, child sexual abuse. So if you cannot, as a police officer, report if you see some police when beating up somebody or some people uh, or some person knocking over somebody in a traffic accident, you can't report that the police was being negligent. You can't report any misdemeanor, mis misdemeanor by the police. What is the point? That's probably why they're peed off that we've got cameras. And now, what they're doing now, I think as of January, we're in it now already. Uh, if you have a phone in your car, it cannot be switched on at all. And you cannot be seen touching it at all. Big fine. So you might as well put that, that phone in, in some back pocket or something. Somewhere you can't get at it. So what they're, what they're doing is eliminating any kind of evidence, any ability to have any evidence against the police because, the, you know, the whistleblowers, they can't do nothing. So the only people who could do something were these people who used to take um, pictures of misdemeanors and they can't do that anymore. They'll have your guts for garters. So anyway... For those of the brave, the strong and the brave, telephone 0300 020 0096, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, or email inquiries at policeconduct.gov.uk. That's inquiries at policeconduct.gov.uk. And that's the Independent Office for Police Conduct. If you see any police officers misbehaving and you feel as though it's okay to report it, you're going to be protected. Well, that's all I've got to say for now. I'm off to prepare for my show. Bye-bye. <laughs>